let's start. Hi, in this video, we wanted to share with you our favorite table of the past few years. The Doc Table. Most chiropractors and physiotherapists are always in search of a technique and a table to treat acute disc injuries. Removing nerve interference is what is taught in chiropractic schools. Most practitioners soon realize that it's much harder than they thought. Adjustment, flexion and massage tables, acupuncture and even physical modalities such as electrotherapy and ultrasound could not always help acute disc injuries with radiculopathy. This is where spinal decompression therapy using a dock table comes in. By being able to position and then apply traction controlled by a built-in computer and sensors, bulged or herniated discs can slip back into place. In a study published in Spine in 2007, patients with sciatica that had decompression felt significantly better in two weeks compared to the exercise-only group. In our experience, if we pick the right patients, then the success rate with this technique is very good. Patients with degenerative disc disease Facet syndrome, WAD3, accident patients with radiculopathy down the arm can all benefit from this table. There are numerous sensors inside the table allowing for measuring and replicating similar treatment. There are two different sets of protocols made for your ease with different ramp up, hold and ramp downs. The fact that the lumbar segment of the table is able to flex, extend, side bend and rotate allow centralization of the symptoms according to the McKenzie technique before the start of traction. Dr. Nima, our clinical advisor, calls this 3D decompression. The following are protocols that were formulated by our clinical advisor Dr. Nima Pardisnia, a chiropractic rehab specialist and a registered physiotherapist. Dr. Nima is the first person utilizing this unique table in Canada. The table is made of a lumbar section that can flex, extend, side bend and rotate. A cervical section that can flex and extend with a head strap unit. A touch screen computer module, arm rests with two different positions. A belt system for lumbar spine, CD player and an optional printer. For ease of patients and practitioners, the whole table has elevation capability. To operate the table, you first turn the key on and agree to the legal statement. Have the patient lay down on the table in the proper position. For the cervical spine, they will always lie on their back. No belting is required for cervical spine. Merely tie the headpiece snug onto the forehead of the patient. The patient may have to press the kill switch before the screen changes. Always describe what the patient should experience by doing a manual traction chosen from the touchscreen using a few pounds. Next is to pick the positioning, program and number of cycles. According to the cervical anatomy, the more flexion on the headpiece, the lower the cervical vertebrae being affected. So when the headpiece is at zero degrees, we are decompressing the upper cervical area. And when we add flexion, we are addressing the lower cervical area. It is hard to say the exact level, but always try to find the most comfortable position for the patient while asking if their radiculopathy is minimized. If this is one of the patient's first few visits, usually start with Legacy Program 6 and choose the number of cycles that will give 15 minutes of decompression. After three visits, change to Legacy Program 5 and choose the cycles that give 18 minutes. As far as the weight is considered, usually take one-tenth of the patient weight or a minimum of 15 pounds of decompression. After three sessions, increase it to 18 pounds, 18 minutes. And after that, to 20 pounds, 20 minutes, protocol two. And finally, 22 pounds, 22 minutes and protocol 2 or 1. At the beginning, protocol legacy 6 and 5 have little hold time between cycles and therefore reduce aggravation of the symptoms. 
As the patient gets used to the decompression and symptoms reduce, more hold time is appropriate. In other words, protocol 2 and even protocol 1. This program can change depending on the patient's response. If the patient is improving, there is no need to add more weight or increase time. You can keep the same setting even though a lot of patients request an increase. For the lumbar spine, the belting is a bit more complicated. Start by setting the lower belt with the red indicator on the split of the table. The upper belt's lower part is set right above the upper part of the lower belt. Fasten the lower belt first and then the upper belt. Take out the slack of both belts. Make sure that the patient is comfortable. The above can also be for the supine position. Play with the table to find the most comfortable position with the maximum centralization. This could be with the patient in the supine position or prone, flexed or extended, side bent and rotated to either side. Usually wait for a minute until centralization has taken place and then start the decompression again from protocol or legacy number 6 at half of the patient's weight for 15 minutes and progress to number 2 or 1 going up to 100 pounds for 30 minutes. Always check on the patient a few times, especially during the first few visits, just to make sure everything is okay. Although a little pain is okay during decompression, radiculopathy or peripheralization may alarm the patient, causing them to halt the process immediately. You can ice the lower back for 5 to 10 minutes after decompression and the cervical spine for 5 minutes to reduce possible muscle spasms. Adjustments of spinal manipulations can easily be done after decompression. Therapeutic exercises can also be administered after decompression. The table is wide enough to do other modalities such as ultrasound. 
I hope you have a doc table next time this patient walks into your office.